up everybody it's pastor g i'm in the house once again first of all i want to say thank you to all of you that post your comments of encouragement you push the like button and for those of you that i see out in public and you tell me how much the videos have encouraged you you say pastor i really appreciate it i want to tell you i appreciate you i'm just trying to do what i feel like god has called me to do to encourage people and any video that I posted thus far, you can go to my YouTube page, Pastor G at Network of Believers. They're all archived there. And by all means, share them several times with several people. Thanks again. I've been doing a teaching in the book of 1 Kings and 2 Kings. And I want to encourage someone today from the 17th chapter of 1 Kings, very familiar passage of scripture, a very familiar story about Elijah. Now, there's some of you that are in your journey and you know God called you to do some incredible things and, and God has shown his hand strong in what he called you to do. But it seems like uh, the moment that he presents you is not there. But 1 uh, Kings 17 chapter speaks to this and I want to read this so that I can be very precise in this teaching it says first king 17 17 chapter first verse it says and elijah the tishbite who was of the inhabitants of gilead said unto ahab as the lord god of israel liveth before whom i stand there shall be not there shall not be dew nor rain these years but according to my word now this is this is a uh, very powerful because the scripture starts out by talking about Elijah the Tishbite from the inhabitants of Gilead. It didn't say uh, the prophet Elijah at this point. It didn't say apostle Elijah or evangelist. It did not give him a title. It just says Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead. In other words, it just pronounced him as just a regular man that is speaking the word of God. Now, this should encourage all of us. This is just the man speaking a word and God honored the words that he said. In other words, it's just like him saying it, he's an African-American from Little Rock and he spoke the word of God. The title wasn't important. It was the word that was important or a, 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 a uh, Frenchman from, from New York. No title was necessary. It was the word that was important. Now, he speaks a word. He stands before the king of Israel, and he, he declares the word of God, and it happened. It's just like standing before the president, and you're saying, this is going to happen. Now, just imagine in 2016, standing before the president, you know that CNN, Fox is going to be there, MSNBC, every social media outlet is going to be there cell phones everything 2016 the moment you speak a word and it is it happens as you said especially a, a word that changes the world on, uh, on that magnitude you would become the most popular man in america just imagine of uh, the most popular man in the world because of the the, the media you will become but notice the second verse says something there it says and the word of the lord came unto him saying third verse says get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself by the brook chariot that is before jordan now elijah just spoke a word that changed the world but god says to him now you got to hide yourself got to go and have, no, 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 just imagine Elijah saying but hold on God I just I just spoke a word the world is watching it's time for you it's time for me to present it's time for me to get busy but God says no go and hide yourself I'm speaking to somebody that is confusing after being used on such an incredible level and then God says not time yet go and hide yourself Notice this. It says, get the hands and turn to Esau. Hide thyself by the brook chariot that is before Jordan. Now, chariot in the Hebrew, the word means separation or to cut away. Notice what God is saying. He's saying, I know I use you to do some incredible things, but now I want to separate you so that I can have private conversation. There are some things that you must know before. 
there are some things I gotta cut away before. I know, I know, I know. I, you should be on the stage right now. You should be before the public right now. But I'm saying, I see what's in you that you are not aware of and I need to cut it out because I'm not presenting you for you to fall. I need to get everything out that will hinder you from maximizing what I'm about to, to present, the opportunity that I'm about to give. I need you to maximize that. So he says, go and hide yourself in the place of the cutting away of, the place of separation, the place that none of your friends can whisper in your ear. I'm the only one that will be able to talk to you there. Notice that he says, and go and, and hide yourself. And notice this, it says, it, it, the, the end of the third verse says, that is before Jordan. Now in scriptorial turn, Jordan is the last crossing before promise. And he says, it's very important that you do that. Get in the place of separation, get in the place of cutting away because you're standing at the point of me presenting you or allowing you to go into your next level. I'm speaking to somebody. Well, I got to cut away. It's on this side of Jordan. The moment we get a, get some time together, the moment I get ready, get a, be able to do what I want to do to cut the things out, to get rid of the pride, to get rid of the anger, to get rid of the selfishness that's in you, I'm going to cut it out. That didn't stop me from using it, but I know to for you to walk in this next level, I need to get rid of it because it's not going to be able to operate there. You would think that it was you and not me. I'm speaking to somebody. The fourth verse says this, and it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Where is there? Now watch this, there, the brook chariot, the place of the cutting, the place of separation. Now there, after prophesying, after after using your gift on that magnitude, you probably think there was the stage. There is, is the place where everybody can see me. He says, no, there, there is the place. And he says, the provision will be there right now. The place that you, that, that it's, it's, it's a lonely place, but that's where the provision is going to be in this season. And notice this, he says, I have commanded the ravens to feed be there now if you look in leviticus i think it is leviticus 11 chapter there's it speaks of clean animals and unclean animals and in the law uh you should not touch anything that is unclean and neither should you touch anything that the unclean thing touched now that's in law but here go god telling elijah that i am causing a raven an unclean thing to sustain you in this time of your life. This is very powerful. So what he's telling Elijah, I've got to rearrange some things in your thinking because where I am about to take you, if you're not careful, some, some tradition or some religious aspect of your life, it's not gonna allow you to go there. You're gonna condemn everything over there and I can't allow it to happen. You didn't know that you had that in you. But I know, so let me cut it away and let me allow, let me test run, let me allow something that you know is unclean to come in your path and see how you process. This is very powerful. Now, this was a God ordained thing to bring glory to God. This was the advancement of his ministry, the raven sustaining him. This was just not Elijah hooking up with something unclean. I thought I had to make, needed to make that very clear. We think that. Uh, God is saying, let me connect with everything unclean or just anything. No, if it's not bringing glory or the advancement of kingdom, then it's not a God connection. Are you here listening to me? So it has to be something that God orchestrated supernaturally. A raven will not bring you food. He's a selfish scavenger. But God directed the ravens to feed Elijah, to adjust Elijah's thinking. You know, there's some things that I'm going to put in your path because where I'm taking you, you should be able to speak to nations, not just to a specific kind. And it's going to bring glory to me. It's not something that's pushing your agenda. It's not just a hookup with anything. It's something that's pushing God's agenda. Now, I'm speaking to someone and I want to make this very clear. We, You are in a moment that God has used you and you think that it's time for me to be presented to the world. And he says, no, I need you to separate. 
I need you to come aside. I want to speak some things. You can take this as, why would God do this to me? Or you can say, you can take it as, God wants to speak to me privately. He wants to speak to you because the assignment on your life is so great that you need to hear specific instructions from God and God himself. Now, there's great people that are in your life, but God wants to speak himself. And he, he has the right and the privilege to say, you belong to me, come aside so I can tell you what I want you to do. You're about to blaze some trails that have never been blazed before. So you need to hear specifically from God. He needs to take some things out of you that are in you that you don't even know that's there. You, it, you can keep them under the current operation. You can keep them stay on this level. But to go to the next level, God says I need to take it away and only I can take it away. Thank God for the great friends. Thank God for the, the mentors. Thank God for all of that. But there's a place there is a uh, just reserve only for God and he needs to speak to you. I hope someone this encouraging you, you are about to move on the next level. But there's a time it could be very confusing that God uses you on a magnet, on a level and you think that it's time to go. But God says, not yet. I need to separate you first. I need to get you, get you away from every influence that can change your course hear what I'm saying that can change your course when I say go there when I say do that I want you to go there and I want you to do that and I don't need anyone to be able to alter that stay in the word of God read that whole chapter first King 17 and and uh, one through the fifth verse and and I'll come back again and I explain the rest of the passage but it's your time God is about to use you to speak world changing life changing life-changing world is about to proceed out of your mouth. Pastor G, love you. Live life on the next level. Let's get back to dedication to God so we can hear him in separation, committing ourselves again to the word of God, and watch God do some miraculous things. Pastor G,